We begin where we left in the previous tutorial. We used an attractor point and the remap members component to reconstruct mesh surface. The remap members component uses a linear proportionality to remap values. Let's visualize this relationship. I'm going to go under vector point and choose to construct point. I'm going to use the series output as x coordinates and the remap members output as y coordinates. As you can see, we get a linear array of points, which represents a linear function. When I change the target domain for the remap numbers, the y coordinates change, but the linear relationship stays. So if we want to change the relationship type, we can use additional grasshopper objects, one of which is the graph mapper. We can find it under params input. With the graph mapper, we can use other types of functions to remap numbers. We can choose the graph type by right-clicking on the capsule and opening the context menu. I'm going to pick the Bezier curve. We still have the orange balloon because the input is missing. I'm going to zoom out and use remap numbers output as the input, and then connect the graph mapper output as y coordinates to construct points. Since I haven't yet modified the Bezier graph, I still have a linear proportionality here. But notice in the Rhino viewport that some values, some points, are being clipped, meaning they are not being affected by the graph mapper. There could be few reasons for that. In my case, the Bezier curve that I am applying has interpolation endpoints, so it's not infinite. And second, the domain of the values that I supply to the graph mapper does not match the argument domain that the graph mapper operates on. I'm going to devote the next tutorial to this topic, but for this exercise, let's simply normalize the input domain. So I need to change the remap numbers target domain to be from 0 to 1. It is very common to normalize data in Grasshopper and programming in general, because it's more practical when we only care about the relationship between values rather than the nominal values. Graph Mapper operates using single variable functions, so the function is represented as a curve. Graph Mapper modifies input numbers by placing them along x axis and intersecting them with a graph curve. The intersection points, y values, are the output results. So y is a function of x. You can see in the Rhino viewport, the array of points corresponds to the graph curve. However, the proportion is skewed along the x-axis because the x-coordinate for points range from 0 to 10, while y-coordinates range from 0 to 1. I'm going to connect the remap numbers output to the x-coordinate input to construct the points. Now the proportion better represents the one we see in the graph mapper capsule but it's very tiny, it fits inside one square unit. I would like to make it larger. One way to do that could be by using multiplication, multiplying the graph mapper output values by some other number larger than 1. Of course, now we are skewing the array of points along y-axis. Another way could be through the graph editor. We can access it by double-clicking on the graph mapper here we have some options to modify the function. We can change the output range by changing the y domain. Let's try doing that. Let's make the y domain from 0 to 5. You can see the change in the upper left corner. And let's reconnect this output as y coordinate input. We get the same output as we got when using multiplication. I try to keep the graph mapper representation consistent, so if I have changed the domain inside the graph mapper, I would then change the capsule accordingly, just as a reminder to myself that the proportions are skewed here. There is one more way I want to show you. I'm going to create a third copy of the graph mapper, and this time we're going to use the remap numbers component again. So let's connect the graph mapper output as value list input. For the source domain, we could leave the default domain because the graph mapper output is normalized, so it matches. But for the sake of keeping it clear to you, I'm going to use the bounce component here. 
For the target domain, I'm going to type in from 0 to 5, so we can compare to the previous methods. Let's reconnect the Y coordinate input. We can see the results are the same. And of course, the target domain does not have to start from 0, and it could also have negative values. It's time to change the X coordinates for the points. Let's go under Sets, Sequence and pick Range. The range component requires a numeric domain and the number of steps to create a range of numeric values. First, I'm gonna hold Ctrl Shift keys and reconnect the output wires from the series component to the range. Now let's change the domain for X coordinate. I'm gonna use a panel and type in, let's say, 3 to 8. I'm also gonna name the panel for clarity. We can see that the values are now different. And uh, now we can connect the range output to the construct point component X input. Okay, so we have a better representation of the graph mapper on the Rima XY plane. We can, of course, also change the number of points by changing the number of steps for the range component. It's time to pause the video and think through the steps before proceeding. Based on the previous exercise, how we could establish a non-linear relationship between the distances from the attractor point and vector magnitudes for vertex transformation. I begin by making some space between the VMAP numbers component and the unit Z capsule. Then go under params, input and take the graph mapper. I'm gonna make it a bit smaller. Let's right-click on the capsule and pick the graph type. I'm going to choose the sine function. I'm not going to manipulate the domains inside the graph mapper, so I need to normalize the input domain, meaning I need to change the target domain for the remap numbers component from 0 to 1. Let's connect the remap numbers to the graph mapper and the graph mapper output as magnitudes for transformation vectors. The definition works fine, but the transformation is too shallow. I'd like to increase the effect of the graph mapper, so I'm gonna again use the remap numbers component. First, let's connect the graph mapper output numbers as values to remap. We can leave the source domain as it is, since the graph mapper range is normalized. And then define a new target domain. Notice that in this instance, when I use the sign function, there are no endpoints. I'm changing the distribution of the infinite sign wave. We can add custom preview color for the mesh. I'm using the gradient here to color the mesh according to the Z coordinate, but we could also use a different parameter, such as the distance from the attractor point. This is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it informative and easy to understand. If you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to leave a comment below and join me in the next video.